So I'm going to start um, the new year working on a, um, uh, a different book, uh, a book of curves by um, Lockwood. Um, this was written in 1960, um, pre widespread use of computers. Um, here's what he says um, about the book. The approach is by pure geometry, starting in each case with methods of drawing the curve. In this way, an appreciation of the shape of the curve is acquired and a foundation laid for a simple geometrical treatment. Uh, there may be some readers who will go no further, and even these will have done more than pass their time pleasantly, but others will find it interesting to pursue the geometrical development, at least to the point at which one or other of the equations of the curve is established. Um, those who have a knowledge of the calculus and coordinate geometry may prefer to leave the text at this point and find their own way using as a guide the summary of results which will be found at the end of each chapter of part one and some chapters of part two. In part two, the reader is encouraged to explore further for himself using whatever resources are available to him. Well, the resources that are available to us are GX Web and Wolfram Alpha, um, tools which were not thought of when this book was written. Um, however, um, I'm going to follow the approach um, uh, quite closely. Uh, I'm going to start with the parabola. Um, and here's how he defines the parabola, uh, defined in terms of an envelope, and drawn initially using a set square. Um, the beautiful thing about the book is it actually gives you uh, locations based on the size of your paper. So if you have a um, certain size of paper, he tells you where to put the focus and where to put the, um, the, 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 the line that you're going to be using to uh, slide the offset square along. Um, well, we're of course going to use GX Web uh, to do those things and um, we'll, we'll take, um, uh, take it away um, by sharing my screen here. Um, so he, he starts by sliding, um, uh, creating a fixed point and a fixed line. So we'll use the uh, point A and uh, the, the y-axis there. Um, and this is one arm of the of the of the set square. Uh, the other arm of the set square, I'll, I'll create just using a perpendicular construction. Um, so there we there we have uh, we have that point A is fixed. Now uh, to fix it in GX Web, I'm going to specify its distance from the y-axis. And that distance A. So now we can. Um, move B along and uh, watch uh, what the other side of the set square uh, uh, does. Now, what he is actually drawing is the envelope of uh, these lines. In his drawing instructions, you, you create multiple lines and then kind of join them up uh, freehand. Uh, what we do instead, uh, we first specify where B lies on the axis. Uh, parametric location t, but this parameter is just the y, the, the y coordinate of b. Um, and so uh, to create uh, the envelope, we just select the line and then use this construction, which for, if a point is selected, will create, we'll create the uh, locus. If a line is selected, it will create the envelope. And so there uh, we have uh, portion of the envelope curve. Now it's just a small portion. It, it's from T uh, taking its default, uh, some default values. Well, I'd like it to go uh, from minus 10 um, to 10. And, uh, let's do that and get a, a somewhat larger um, uh, chunk of our curve. Uh, we can animate T if you like to watch. Um, uh, watch how the uh, 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 how the line um, uh, envelops the curve. So what's going to happen now um, in in the book is we're going to derive some of the properties of the parabola. And um, well, we haven't actually shown this is a parabola. But, well, we've defined it to be a parabola, I guess, uh, as the envelope. Um, so this curve that we've defined, uh, which we're calling a parabola, 
uh, we'd like to derive some properties. And I'm going to go to a second drawing to start uh, deriving properties here. Um, so very quickly, uh, here's my point, my fixed point, and we'll uh, specify its length, its distance from the axis there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two uh, positions for my set square. So here's one position. And here's another position. And then I'm going to create the uh, the reflected line, the tangent, the, not the reflected, the, uh, um, the perpendicular line, uh, both these uh, locations. And I'm going to create the intersection of these two. Now, uh, Lockwood makes the point that as these, uh, as B and C come together, uh, this point becomes uh, the point on both, it's, it's the point of both tangents, and therefore it becomes uh, the point um, on the tangent to the curve that we're, uh, that we're talking about. Now that's a little bit of an imprecise statement, but I'm going to I'm going to stick with it. Um, the precise statements would involve, would involve calculus and so forth. So let's stick at a geometry level. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the circumcircle of these three of these points. Now, because this is a right angle, um, we know that dA is a diameter of that circumcircle. Um, the angle in a semicircle is right. But because this is the angle B is also right, um, that says that B lies on that circle. So there's, that circle goes through all four points, uh, A, B, C, D. Now, if I draw the line from C uh, down the y-axis there, because these, these four points are cyclic. If we look at the angles which rest on the chord AB, um, one of them is BCA, and another one is BDA. So both of those angles are equal. That's this angle here and this angle here. And what that says is that the triangles, let me just draw those triangles, the triangle B, D, A, let me make a, a purple triangle. So that triangle there is um, similar to this dark black triangle uh, because two of the angles are the same, the angle out here, and this is a right angle down here at F, and uh, that's also a right angle here at B. So these two um, triangles are similar, but if we, if we pull B up to here, we see that as we as we approach the actual um, uh, point on the on the envelope the point on the on the parabola, we now have this triangle, uh, the triangle formed by the by the actual um, uh, set square, and then the triangle formed uh, to the origin of our axis. Uh, these are similar. And that fact is what. Um, uh, what would base a lot of the properties uh, on. So how do we see that in this diagram? Well, we need a point on the curve at the location of the tangency. The way to do that, we put a point on the curve, it picks up a, a parametric location, S. Uh, if we change that to T, uh, we're going to get the point where uh, this tangent uh, calls to the curve. And so the two triangles that we were 
I'm sorry, ah, it's the token, I'm not sure what we're seeing. The two triangles we're looking at um, are these two. Um, so this triangle is similar uh, to this triangle, which then says, if we complete this drawing and uh, pull this line down to, to E, so we have ABC is similar to ADC, ADB, but because it's a right angle, the fact that AD, the, the triangle ADB is now is similar to ABE. However, so, so ABE is similar to ABC. And um, shares a line. So in fact, they're congruent. And so we now do the following, we create a rhombus. So we could do that, for example, by making these two lines equal. And these two lines equal. Yeah, I picked the wrong line there, didn't I? <laughs> I made it equal to this shorter line. Uh, that's not what I want to do, so let's back out of that. Uh, let's make it sure that make it equal to this longer line. Yeah. Um, and so now we can get a lot of properties out of, out of this. B there is the center of the rhombus, so that means that point F um, is the reflection uh, is the reflection of B, and then by similar triangles we can see that um, FG is the same as DA, and so if we look at the uh, locus of F, for example, as T varies. Uh, we can see that is a straight line. If you ask for the coordinates of it, um, we see quite simply it's minus a um, and two t. So um, f as as t moves, f moves down a straight line, which is. Um, uh, a distance a um, from the origin. Um, this, of course, is the directrix, and from this whole uh, argument, we get a couple of different properties uh, pretty straightforwardly. Uh, we already see that the distance from f to c is the same as the distance from c to a, and so that's the that's the focus directrix construction uh, of um, the parabola. And we also see that this line, which is the tangent, intersects, uh, is the angle intersection um, between F, C, and A. And that's the focal property that says that light coming in parallel to the axis reflects to the, um, the focus. Um, so that's where we picked up a lot of the, our um, uh, traditional uh, properties of the parabola. A final point. Uh, we would like to see the equation of the curve. Um, y squared equals 4xA. Um, we can get that um, geometrically by observing that GBC is similar to BDA. And the GB is the same length as BD. Um, so the Y coordinate, the X coordinate, which is GC to T is the same as 
t to a that um, uh, can be uh, uh, unwrapped to give us this uh, equation here. Well, I'll proceed with some more properties of the parabola in a subsequent um, uh, video. I'll stop this one at this point. <laughs>